Hello, my dear friends. Now, before we get started this evening, I've got a little favor to ask you. I want you to check out the Creepy Pasta Amino. This is a social network just for Creepy Pasta fans. Now, let's take a quick look. What do we see here? Well, there's a front page of featured posts, the very best of the Amino. There are loads of other things, such as public chats, quizzes, and so on. Now, the reason I love this is because Amino is an awesome place to read tons of original creepypastas and share your own. So, you know what to do? Click on the link below. Now, this is a special, personalized link just for me, so Amino knows that I sent you. Okay guys, thanks a lot. I'm just a normal guy. Well, I got lucky. I proved to be really good at something I loved. People started to buy my drawings, then my paintings. Then before I knew it, I was having wines I couldn't even name in houses too damn big for a family of twelve. Being asked to host a charity event wasn't that unusual. Being told I would be co-hosting with a writer I'd never heard of was. I mean, I've been a co-host when I was starting out, and a few more times over the past few years. But I knew all of the co-hosts. All as famous, or more so than I. But this person, this Aza Wintley, <laughs> never heard of them. What are they even right, anyway? My agent tossed me a book. Horror but not the usual killer-in-the-closet shit. She finds your worst fears and then whispers them into your ear. This is huge. Her first time in public. <sighs> Maybe it was time to get a new agent. Great. A newcomer. One no one knew. Hadn't been in public. This sounded like a shitstorm in a tin can shack. Can't say why I took the book, but I did. Tossed it in the car and drove along the coast. Book was my passenger for a week, before one day I was caught in one of the jams and saw it. Picked it up and flipped through. I didn't want to put it down. Distracted, I barely managed not to wreck the car on the way home. And once there, well, there was something wrong. The book was called Tales Told Beneath a Starry Sky. I was trying to read it in bright California sun. I set it aside, painted, made a meal. I waited till the sun became a blaze of colors, then the night came creeping across the land. Then I picked it up, and it wasn't fighting me now. It was willing eager to tell me the tales. I devoured the book. Every single tale, every sentence, every disclaimer, the foreword, the last line. Will you welcome my tales again? I sat there, blinking at that question. Was there another book? Ah, Google search, I love you. Tales spoken beneath the hidden moon. Damn it. In stock at the now-closed bookstore nearby. It would be ten more hours before I could have that book in my hands. Hidden moon. That had to be a new moon. I caught myself seeking the moon out. And, seeing it as a fading sliver, I smiled. And then, I felt like an idiot. <laughs> What if the book had been named Tales Spoken Under a Bridge? Would I have been sitting beside some homeless guy reading it? <laughs> I picked up the book I had and devoured every story again, knowing the answer was yes. <laughs> if it would only allow me to read it sitting in a tutu on top of a fountain in the middle of the park, I would. I should have burned that book and never gone to that bookstore. I spent another hour on the computer. Two books out. A third had been published, but not released. 
Asa Winterling. Age unknown. Only picture was from the back of the second book. A grainy black and white photo of someone walking along a tree-covered path. Shadows hiding almost everything about her. The hair was long. I mistook it for a cloak at first. That was the only detail I had. Already, fan pages, declarations of undying love, of willingness to be her slave, just whisper to them, and they would love her, obey her, follow her through broken glass. Wait, what was that third book? I went looking again. Tales whispered through a broken window. I was exhausted and anxious. I wanted to be up in time to get that second book. I wanted that third book now. I wanted called my agent. Yes, yes, I'll do the show, but I want an advanced copy of that third book, and I want it now. So, would I be able to read it, or was I going to have to break a window somewhere? I wrote emails to everyone I could think of about the book, about the writer. Who was she? How did you pronounce the name? Ah, za Aze. I passed out on my desk, phone alarm screaming at me too soon, waking and heading out the door. I was still wearing yesterday's clothing when I went to the store. The woman looked at me strangely as she unlocked the door. Yes, we have it. Only the one copy arrived yesterday. Weird thing. It only ever comes in a few at a time. There's always the exact number needed for people asking for it the next day. I just didn't expect you the moment the door opened. It was solid. Real. In my hands. Twelve tales just like the first. I cheated, flipping to the very last line. If I whisper, will you hear me? Yes. Pigeons startled into the air, and a few early morning people turned to stare at me. Ooh, had I said that aloud? No, I had screamed it. I tucked it into my shirt and almost ran to my car before looking at the picture on the back cover. Already I knew there were twelve trees, one for every story. Long must be a pale color. Blonde, maybe. The black and white turned it ghostly pale. The path was old. She was between the fifth and sixth pair of trees, walking toward the camera. But I couldn't see her face. Jeans. Slacks. A coat the wind had caught and tossed like her hair. Leaves raced across the path, fleeing the wind. Vague. Blur. My fingers traced the edge. Soon I would be on a stage with her. What did she look like? Would the audience be my fans? Or hers? Eager for a first glimpse of her? None more eager than I. What would her voice sound like? Would she be young? Old? Married? I... Why was I even thinking this? I read twelve short stories and suddenly I was obsessed with someone I knew nothing about. I wanted to read this new book. I did read the foreword. I even tried to sneak the first story. But bright morning light did not fit the story. I couldn't see the words. Blinded. The day was long. My agent called. Would see what he could do. Aza? No, he didn't know much about her. Someone described her as a fairy princess of nightmares. Lunch was dull. 
my paintings were vivid, dark images from the stories. A red scarf, a bird with a ring in its beak, a child skipping rope, a rose held in bloody hands. I didn't even know I painted them until they were staring back at me. Maybe I could offer them to her for her books if she promised to tell me more of her tales. Oh, who was I kidding? I hadn't even read the second book, and I could tell you I would crawl through that broken window. I would take a shard of glass and offer up my flesh and blood to hear more of her tales. Can't tell you what I ate as I sat on the back patio. Watch the sunset with not my usual calm appraisal, but impatience. I needed the new moon to rise already. As it did, and I tore the book open. Twelve stories. Twelve nightmares brought to life by mere words. Past midnight as I closed the book and stared at the photo. Twelve trees. Six on either side. I had made a mistake. She was between the fourth and fifth set of trees. Aza. Misery. I had no idea when I would hold the third book. And more. The fourth. Was it even started? The fifth. How many tales? Nightmares. I was spiralling into grief at the thought of those empty nights. Oh, I should have paced myself. Read only one a night. I was as greedy as a child on Halloween night. I'd stuffed my face with the chocolate and now I had nothing but apples and toothbrushes in my bag. Aza. She would have a voice like rain, I thought. Soft and murmuring. Aza. She would be my age with long, pale hair. Eyes. Her eyes had to be extraordinary. Eyes were the window to the soul. And any soul that wrote those tales. Aza. <laughs> you idiot. I would reread those two books till they were memorized. I already knew it. A poem. One of the fan sites had a picture of a poem written for charity. Handwritten. I, I couldn't make it out. I tried every search I could. No joy was had in Mudville this night. I woke to the chime of my email and treacherous, cruel, bright sunlight. My agent. Please let her have the third book. Oh, I will ration it out. A single tale a night. Only one. I know better now. I have to nibble at this third book, not devour it so greedily. The email address startles me. Winterling. A sound file. I do the unthinkable and download it without even thinking of scanning it. It is transferred to my phone and I start my day. It's there, waiting for me. I know it is a story. I know it's going to be her voice whispering to me. I can't hear her in the garish light of day. I have to wait for the stars to make her loud enough to hear. Torture. I keep staring at my phone. It's there, waiting. I can't think of anything else. What will she whisper to me? What will she tell me? I try to nap, waking fretfully, thinking I'd miss the night. The phone hugged tight to my chest. Two more hours till sunset. I feel like screaming. I want to hear her voice, with no light but the stars shining on me. I want to close my eyes and pretend she is standing there beside me, whispering. Those few hours aged me years. And then, it was dark enough. A few
few sweeps of a finger, a press, slip the earbuds in, and close eyes. Hello. I understand you wish to hear my tales. Her voice was more than I'd dreamed, low and soft, a sweetness to it, a steel to it, clean and musical. It soothed my aching and longing. It comforted me. Forty-one minutes, she whispered, and I listened. I was shaking and sweaty when it ended. No goodbye, no warning. I was a man who was a hand's breadth from the top of a mountain, and now cascading down the side of it. I was crying. Tears ran unheeded, burning my eyes. I wanted to play it again, but I couldn't. Already I knew every word, every breath she had taken. And I needed more. Oh, I hated myself for this need. I poured myself into a painting. A man reaching up for a salvation that would never come. Myself? <laughs> no. The story had lingered, and I was now trying to purge it. Or maybe to catch it and hold it for my own. I had worked on it for hours, exhausting myself, but even I could tell it was nothing like my usual work. No. It was better. I passed out on the couch, too tired to bother climbing the stairs to one of the bedrooms above. I dreamed. Oh, God, the dreams were like her voice, there but untouchable, leaving me waking with a scream that had the maid crossing herself and me blinking in confusion. Oh yes, Marta, came in every afternoon and kept the place from looking abandoned, rising and stumbling to my bathroom with a muttered apology. She tusked me wondered what vice I had taken up. Her eyes accused me silently, but I had not even had wine the evening before. The shower was cold. I needed it to wash the cobwebs from my mind. I needed it to cleanse my soul and make me pure again. Make me ready for what? I barely bothered toweling off, and stumbled to the office, towel wadded up for an attempt at decency. Marta huffed and vanished to the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I was giving her enough to gossip about. I heard her muttering in her native language. Leave it to me to hire an Irish woman who actually spoke Gaelic. Usually, when she needed to say something, I would have been unhappy to hear. But right now, I only wanted my email. The phone was dead, left unplugged. The computer seemed to taunt me with the time it took to boot up and finally reach my email. I refreshed several times, unwilling to believe my eyes. Nothing. Well, letters from a dozen or so people wanting my attention. Gallery owners, agents, lawyers. The people hosting the charity event where I would be on stage with her. That one I opened. The usual information. Praise and thanks, as well as legal disclaimers. Yada, yada, yada. I dressed slowly, feeling lost. I should go out and do... What? Nothing felt exciting to me. I was grieving the silence as I retreated back to my studio. Here, the scent of paint, thinners and varnish surrounded me. Sunlight assaulted me, usually a welcome friend, but today it mocked me. Aza belonged to the cool and secretive nights, to rainy days and stormy skies. I picked up the book, looking at the only picture I had of her, and frowning. The figure was closer, halfway down the path now. But photos couldn't move. I was positive it was the same book, the same photo, but it wasn't. 
Maybe I was imagining it had to be. I picked out a new canvas, the largest I had, and started painting blindly. It was a woman that emerged, half leaning against a pillow, pouting lips, delicate face, long hair the colour of moonlight, a flawless beauty in an old-fashioned nightgown, a fairy awakening. The background was darkness, blood, fire, Images peeking out, half-glimpsed nightmares at odds with the woman. I had no clue what I was painting, or where it came from. My hands flew about with no command from me, and things appeared. When I stepped back, it was night, and the painting was finished. The woman was close to life-size. A face, hair, shoulder and upper body, arms fading away looking over her shoulder as if trying to understand what had disturbed her sleep. Gown rumpled and falling in silky folds. All around in the darkness were hints of something I couldn't quite piece together. Betrayals. Deaths. Fears. Pain. I cleaned my hands and went to see what Marta had left for me to eat. Soup sat in a crock pot, a wrapped plate in the fridge. My phone sat on the counter, a blue light blinking to let me know there were things it had to tell me, and I cared not. Wait, maybe one was an email alert. I grabbed it and, yes, there were more emails, but none that I cared for. No moon tonight. Heavy clouds hid the stars. I was abandoned. Alone. Stepping out onto the patio, the air was humid and stifling. I gave a thought to raiding the bar for something strong. And just sitting out here till the sun chased me back inside. I was undecided when the phone chimed. I yelped in surprise, then scrambled to find it. Unknown caller. Blocked number. I meant to reject it. Instead... I answered it. Then her voice made me stumble and sit down, right there on the stone steps. The heat and heavy air faded. The night vanished and I was taken to another place. I watched a traveling caravan approach an old village at the edge of the woods. I watched a dancer and a violin player enchant the townspeople. Firelight flickering. I heard it crackle. I heard the horses, the dogs, children. And then I was tumbled back to harsh stone steps and a night that threatened to suffocate me. Thunder rumbled and lightning edged the clouds. A rare storm was brewing and I needed to get inside. Wait, what had that story been again? I hadn't heard it. I had lived it. I made it inside before the storm started, retreating to the studio where I could watch it, where I could hope to make sense of what had happened. I must have slept, because I woke to sunlight, and Marta gasping and praying. She stared wide-eyed at the painting of the woman, crossing herself and looking at me in horror. Lane on Seija. Hands moving frantically, she backed away and muttered Hail Marys. Before I could stop her, she was gone, out the side door, into her car and down the driveway. What in the hell? I needed a shower, coffee, sleep in a bed. I'm not sure what order I should go in when I stumbled first to the kitchen. The soup and the plate both sat untouched. I hadn't eaten the night before. Maybe that was why I was stumbling and out of sorts this morning. Now, what Marta's problem was, I couldn't say. Oh, coffee. That would be a start. Hot shower, then bed. A real 
bed. Where was my phone? Still in the studio? Need to plug it in. My only lifeline to her. Sweet Jesus. I needed to get my head together before I was howling like a cartoon wolf the moment I met her. And I would meet her. Maybe there would be meetings before the event. And there usually were. The painting still waited. Nearly dried now. The Dreamer Awakening. Yes, that would be its name. The phone was on the floor, making sure the ringtone was loud enough to awaken me. I headed toward my room. The shower cleared some of the fog away. Damn, I never had gotten the coffee. Well, later. Sleep first, then go out and get a meal and some overpriced, over-sugared coffee. And then... Well, I would try and act normal again. Get back to my normal habits and pretend that these past few days of obsession hadn't happened. Oh, someone had replaced my bed with a torture device. I tossed and turned. The sheets were like sandpaper. The mattress stuffed with gravel. The room was too bright, too hot, too cold, too everything and anything. I crawled out of bed miserable. The coffee was half whiskey as I stumbled to the studio. Marta hadn't cleaned, nor would she return. The service she was hired through had left messages apologizing and offering replacements. I left a cranky message to have someone that wouldn't run shrieking at the sight of a painting there that afternoon. The painting was still not dry, nor was it finished. I now added more to the blackness. Firelight gleaming on blood. A horse hoof stamping into dirt. A violin being played by pale hands. Fading as if out of focus. The gate buzzer made me growl and come out of my trance. Why would anyone disturb me while I was busy with... Oh, the maid service. I hit the remote for the gate. She came in timidly. A small Hispanic woman with grey shot hair in a tight bun. I waved towards the kitchen, mumbling something that made her fight to hide her frown. I didn't care. Clean the rooms and get out. Leave me to my work. I needed to finish adding the story from last night to the painting. This was going to be the gift I presented to her when we did the event. I had to finish it. Had to add the nightmare she whispered of to the disturbed sleeper. Oh, yes. Maybe that should be the painting's name. I didn't know anymore. Maybe I should have her name it. Her words would be perfect. Another intrusion. A tray dropped. Plates breaking and spewing their contents all over the floor. <sighs> Madre de Dios! Demonio! What in the nine levels of hell? Two maids in two days shrieking and running from the painting that was going to be my greatest artwork. Screw it. I could pick up after myself till I found someone that wasn't crazy. Food was scattered over the floor. Soup and sandwiches it looked like. When was the last time I'd eaten? Didn't matter. Clean the mess up before it attracted pests. Then, back to the painting. I needed to finish it. When she called tonight, I would... No, no. I wanted to surprise her. To see her eyes widen in delight that I had brought her words to life. Coffee, and one of those crystal containers of who knew what overpriced whiskey. That would do for dinner. Then clean the paint off myself. Another storm was coming, so I headed up to the rarely used overlook on the roof. It had a view worth every bit of the money the house had cost me. Built over the canyon, peering down to the city, the ocean. Coyotes yelped somewhere far below, getting ready for a night of raiding trash cans and chasing house pets. 
I wondered for a moment why I rarely came up here. True, by day it was a furnace, but here, at night, would Aza lean against that rail right there and tell me her story ideas? Would she even like this house? It was bright and airy, perfect for my paintings normally, but she was a creature of secrets and shadows. Candlelight for her, rather than a twelve-foot glass monster of a chandelier. Yes, I decided. I would have it remodeled to make this a suitable place to sit at night and watch the city in a distance. To look down into the dark canyon and imagine more than just the wildlife that prowled there. I would offer her the choice of rooms to turn into a workroom for herself. I no longer doubted that I would be hers, and she mine. I needed her voice more than breath. Why was that damn phone silent? I collapsed in a lounger, desolate and abandoned, lost beneath the clouds that hid the stars. The phone was failing me. I knew it had to be so. She would not forget, not neglect the nightly ritual. Thunder in a distance. A fox screamed. Random sounds of life drifted up to me. I picked up the book, glancing at the only picture I had of her. It was wrong. The path was there. The trees... The leaves still chased by a forgotten wind. But she was not in the picture. Shaking, I stared at it. This was impossible. I could convince myself I'd imagined her coming closer in the picture, but vanishing. Footsteps so soft, I at first mistook them for imagination. A hand brushed against my head. Will you listen to my tale? I wanted to look at her. To ask how she found me. To ask how she got here. To hug her close. To grovel at her feet. I closed my eyes and relaxed. A single word breathed out as I felt my body grow heavy. Always. He watched as the officers left his office. He had been the only contact number. He waited several minutes before he leaned back and smiled. So there was yet another member of the 27 Club. And the paintings he'd been struggling to sell a month ago would now be worth a fortune. He smiled and called the man who had told him how to get his client back into the headlines. Frank. It worked. Can't believe it, but it really happened. Yeah, sometime last night he decided to walk off the roof deck of his house. Forty-story fall, then a couple of hundred feet into the canyon. Eek, gonna be a closed casket. But you know what that means. Oh yes, there will be conspiracy theories for years to come saying he faked his death. What? Go and find the last work need to make sure it's hidden. Why? It'll be worth a fortune. Yeah, yeah, okay. I understand that's just part of the contract. Can't let the last work ever be seen. His eyes noticed an announcement. Aza Winterling's new book was released to record-breaking first-day sales. The fourth book had also been announced. Stepping into an eternity. Hmm. What an odd title. He put the phone down. He would need to go find the painting there. He wasn't convinced in magic. But right now it was better to be cautious. No reason to have whatever this demon muse was. Angry with him. After all, he might soon have another client to offer her.
thanks for taking the time to drop by and watch this video. You know what would make me a happy doctor? Hitting that like button, leaving a comment, and subscribing to my channel. Go on, I've got plenty more stories to tell you. Ha 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 ha.